Hello, everyone, and welcome to the BI Livecast series. My name is Carrie Keenan, and I'm one of the program directors here at Brand Innovators. I want to welcome everyone to our C-suite marketing and leadership livecast. Um, today's going to be really special, and I'm thrilled to get this kicked off. We've got a phenomenal agenda today with an awesome lineup for you. Um, before we get started, I do want to, first of all, thank all the marketers, sponsors, and you, the audience, um, for helping make this event possible. Throughout the event today, you'll be able to use the Q&A widget and a chat widget down at the bottom of your screen. And we do encourage you to um, engage with our speakers and the other attendees using those widgets throughout our program. So now, without further ado, uh, please join me in, in welcoming Matt Eisenacher, the SVP of Brand, and Strateg Brand Strategy and Innovation at First Watch, and their moderator, Tori Lee, Sales Manager from Nextdoor. Welcome, everyone. Hey everyone. Hi there. How Very, are you? I'm good. It's good to see you, um, in, well, virtually at least. Very nice to see you as well. It's still a little odd when you can uh, join and reach so many people now via screen without even going to a conference. So uh, it's nice to see you. Yes, it's very nice to see you. Um, I'm thrilled to be here today and I'm really excited to talk with you, Matt. Um, Matt, who is the SVP of Brand Strategy and Innovation at First Watch. Uh, you have an impressive background in the food and dining industry, and we connected last week kind of in preparation of this call. And what really stood out to me when we connected is your passion for customer experience every time someone walks into one of your restaurants and the community you're building around those locations. So I'm just really excited to dive into things. How does that sound? Excited, excited to share our story <laughs> uh, with so many people as well. Great. Well, just to kind of start things off, tell us a little bit more about your background, how you ended up at First Watch. Yeah, actually, uh, so I've been in restaurants for about 10 years, and uh, I think it's noteworthy because I think the exciting thing for the industry is that we're starting to see a lot of people come in from other other industries, especially retail and uh, and, and even beauty and hospitality. So um, I was one of those. I came uh, from consumer products. Uh, so I was actually trained by the world's largest food company. I worked for Nestle, uh, and I got to work on a variety of their brands and um, and also in their innovation groups. So I've always been somewhat in food. Uh, and uh, before I came to First Watch, I was actually at a brand based out of a Columbus, Ohio named Piata Italian Street Food. And it's a brand that's still near and dear to my heart. And the way that I ended up there was, I just walked in one day and I thought it was super cool. Um, and for anyone that doesn't know who they are, you should check them out. Uh, and I just wrote a note to someone I didn't know and shared some ideas and I ended up there. Um, and then I had the opportunity to to come to First Watch and uh, based in uh, Bradenton, Florida, and um, the, the rest is history. But I was excited to join the team here because First Watch has been doing what it's doing for 40 years. Great team, great group of people. And uh, for the last several years, we've been the fastest growing full service brand uh, in the United States. Yeah, that's amazing to hear. And I, I love your story about the handwritten note. Um, I think we don't do that anymore these days. So I'm going to have to give it a try myself. Um, <laughs> Old school, I know, but it worked. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, you guys are definitely growing rapidly. I believe over 440 locations across the US. You're in 28 states. Um, just And then you've been in the industry for a while. So what are some of the biggest changes you've seen in the dining industry over the past five years? Oh boy, and then you you know you put COVID in the middle of that, which put everything on steroids. Um, you know, I, I'll reference technology probably a lot of time uh, or a lot of times today, and uh, it, it's more because that that's that's one of the more prevalent changes you're seeing in the industry right now. I mean, it's it's the rate of change with technology, and you know, where whereas you know years ago it would have taken years to see certain bits of technology advance, and notably the the restaurant industry is actually pretty far behind um, in terms of technology. They've just been slower to adopt and, and the systems are a little more uh, siloed. Um, and that's the cool thing about seeing people come into the industry because they're bringing learnings that you're seeing from these other industries. And that's made it, it's made it really exciting. Um, the other thing I'd say is, I always say the Instagramization of food. And I, I realize it's probably not really a word. Maybe it is, I don't know. But uh, we can make it a word after this interview. <laughs> somewhere. Uh, but uh you're seeing culinary trends move so much faster. And, you know, I look at Berea right now is one of those trends that you're starting to see everywhere. And it, it, the, the rate of change, you see that going through even all the way to QSR or fast food restaurants, like it's happening so quickly because 
everyone's on their phone. Everyone's a chef now. And so for restaurants, you, you really have to think about how you mobilize things to your menu faster, which has been a really fun challenge and think I, you know, something I think First Watch does exceptionally well um, because younger, especially Gen Z, even more than other generations, they expect everything to be on trend and new and, and they're already a step ahead of you. And so I think that's one of the cool and exciting things you've seen with the restaurant industry because the rate of change has just happened so much faster. Yeah, I agree. I think one of the most effective and positive trend in the industry coming out of COVID is just how restaurants of all sizes now embrace technology. And, you know, during one of our conversations, you kind of talk about the customer experience when they walk into one of, of um, into one of your restaurants and how you kind of tie in technology when they're getting, they're in there and they, they can order from a tablet and they put it down. Can you share a little bit more about some of those tactics in, in terms of customer experience and, and technology that you're focused on? Yeah, I, you know, I, I'll be even more straightforward and say yeah. we're, we're probably even just in the early incubation stage. So obviously we're a full service restaurant and, you know, over the past few years, you've seen fast food and uh, fast casual, I think be a little bit more of a, a first mover as it comes to infusing technology into the experience. And I think, look, I, I wouldn't want to have to go through the way it happened with COVID, <laughs> but it did put it you know, in the full service industry, it did force us to move faster and not be as reluctant in integrating technology. So for us at First Watch in 2019, if you wanted a place to go order, you had to call us on the phone. And by the way, we wrote it, we hand wrote it on a ticket in 2000, actually at the beginning of 2020, we hand wrote it on a ticket, we passed it to another human being in the kitchen and they read it out to the rest of the kitchen. Like if you just sit and ponder that for a moment, it's, it's incredible. And so all at once that changed. And so, you know, I, I think the biggest thing that we're doing right now is we're starting to bring technology into our kitchens. Uh, we're bringing screens into the kitchens and we're allowing things to be somewhat automated so you're not relying on a, on a, on a human being. Um, and so that's probably been the, the, the fastest thing that, that we've been able to do that's allowed our teams to increase our speed of service um, and to allow us to bring these new takeout and off-premise channels into our restaurants, which we were not doing before. And so I, I think for us, the next frontier is, you know, we're doing that to make the job easier for our teams. That's what we're doing to make our kitchens easier. But now it's about looking at the customer through their lens. And we're, what's really exciting is we're able to look at that person from the moment that they're home, wanting to join our wait list because our, our waits can be up to an hour, hour and a half on the weekends. From the moment they decide to do that all the way through the way they pay when they want to leave is looking at how technology can find those points of friction and to release that friction and to elevate the overall experience. So I think the way you have to think about it, especially in full service is never look at technology for technology's sake. You have to consistently look through the eyes of the customer and the journey they go through and try to apply it only at points where you see points of friction um, to benefit them. Yeah, and it sounds like your your team over there is really focused on simplifying that customer experience with technology. So, you know, when you walk into a restaurant, it's more about engaging with who you're there to eat with, it's engaging with the food that you're serving them. Um, and speaking of which, I, I did look over your food ethos and as someone who tends to, or tries to be a, a healthy eater when I when I go out and eat, um, I was what really stood out to me is just the fresh produce and how, how First Watch prepares their meal. Can you tell us a little bit more about the background on the food ethos and, and how that came about? Um, I'm, I'm flattered that you went and, and saw that on our site because it was mm -hmm. a, it, we wear that, that ethos, our food ethos is a badge of pride for sure. And yeah. that's why we wanted that to be on our site so people understood it. And you know, a lot of times when you, when you see our food and the way it comes out of the kitchen, um, it is Instagrammable and it's, it, it, it's so fresh and you know, I, I forget the exact number, but somewhere around 25 to 30 percent of what we bring in our back door is fresh produce. And we get a lot of shipments to allow us to keep up with the amount of fresh produce that we that we use. And so initially, when people see that, they, they always ask us like, oh, do you source locally? Because I think that's where people go. But for us, we think about it a little bit differently and we we call it follow the sun. And we like to say that we like to go to the parts of the U.S. that have the freshest, most in-season produce at that time. And so, you know, we get strawberries, you know, in the summer from California. And then in the winter, that shifts right up the road from where we are in Florida. And because, you know, you want to go where 
the, the food is freshest. And, and the other thing I think is Chef Shane, our, our head chef, uh, I give him a lot of credit because you know, we have a juice called Watermelon Wake Up. It's like one of our best selling juices. And he always gets asked, like, why don't you add it to the menu all the time? And he's like, because you don't want watermelon outside of the summer. Or his favorite dish is the Mexican elote street corn hash. And we, we traditionally only have it in the summer because that's when the corn's the freshest. And so we really try to live by this ethos of building really good partnerships with our, our makers, bakers, and growers, and uh, going to the part of the U.S. where food is freshest. And so I'm glad you were able to see that. Yeah, and it sounds like you guys operate everything from technology, customer experience, how you prepare your food through the customer lens. And, you know, what is going to be best for our customer is the freshest produce. It's the most simple experience um, when you're ordering at a restaurant and the overall experience when you step into one of your, your stores. So I love that. Um, you know, I think people are dining out more than ever now with, you know, us just coming out of COVID and wanting to be in the community again. And I know on next door alone, about 96 of our neighbors eat out at a restaurant. So from your perspective, what makes First Watch kind of stand out from other competitors? Uh, well, I'll say at a top level, it's, it's food and people, um, yep. or freshness and people, excuse me. And they might say, that might sound like a generic answer, but let me explain what I mean. Um, we are who we are because of our people. And we're able to grow as fast as we are because of our people. And what's most noteworthy about First Watch is we have been doing what we're doing for 40 years. And a lot of times, you know, I think you started to see Fast Casual really grow, I don't know, maybe around early 2000s into 2010, it kind of exploded. And you see a lot of restaurant brands that have been around for three to five years and they're trying to scale and open up units. And you haven't even, you haven't even found your sea legs yet. And so for us, you know, doing what we've been doing for four decades, like it's not uncommon to find people in our leadership and our restaurants that have been here for 20, 25, 30 years. And it's just so cool to see because that's what, you know, during COVID, we saw that come through. We just have the most passionate people that in the restaurant industry, you have to remember, you're not really just serving food, it's a people business. And, and so we're very lucky to have that as what has made us very successful. And then the other part of what I would say is the freshness of our food. You touched on that a little bit with our ethos, but you know, uh, we, we change our menu five times a year. So every 10 weeks we're changing our menu. And that is for a, a restaurant company with as many restaurants as we have, and as fast as we're growing, it is, it is extremely difficult. But we know how important that is because it allows you to demonstrate freshness. It allows you to stay in tune with the seasons. And it allows you to bring those on-trend moments to the menu that otherwise could be debilitating for an organization. And so now for us, that's a, that's a well-oiled machine. And, and to better, better illustrate the freshness, you know, we're very proud. We like to point to our fresh juices that we, the first thing our managers do when they come in the restaurants in the morning is they juice fresh fruits and vegetables. And we've had a lot of larger organizations that have come to us and said, how are you doing this at scale? How are you, how are you doing this? And, and so, you know, we, we get really proud about those types of things. And, and we always say that um, freshness has to be at the center of our culinary philosophy. And I think we do that very well. Yeah, I think so too. And kind of like what you mentioned, what was it? The wake me up watermelon juice? That's only oh, yeah, the watermelon that wake up, man. People oh. love watermelon in yeah. the summer. <laughs> I could use I could use that today, um, but I'm sure you know for someone who comes into your restaurants yearly, they probably look forward to that season when that juice is back. So there's almost a personal affinity with coming into that restaurant during the summer and getting that juice that you can't get anywhere else, and also that you can't get at any time at first watch. Well, it's like it's like a treasure hunt when you think about it. Yeah. Like we have, we have all the the favorites that you'd normally expect from a, a breakfast restaurant. So if you want a traditional breakfast, you have that. But then you get to always come in and there's always something new. And so that that's the excitement we want to deliver for our customers. Yeah, I love sitting down at a restaurant and just knowing, you know, you're not going to get the same menu every time and it changes. And, and to know that it's fresh, I think it's just an overall great experience. Yeah. Um, and you touched on this a little bit, but the people part, and obviously that's the foundation of any company. And we've gone through a lot the past couple of years. So I'm curious to learn from you as a leader, how are you leading your team through change and keeping people motivated during uncertain times? Um, you know, even in those early days, like I'll, I'll never forget the moment when we were sitting there as a leadership team talking about COVID and someone said, Ohio just closed all their restaurants. Like, what do you mean? Like, how does that, yeah. what is that even, how can that be possible? And especially for those first few months, like 
nobody had any answers, right? And I, I guess the one thing I've learned over the past two years is, um, especially in leading a team, is transparency and being very human about what you do. And so I, I think um, it's okay, like when you go through moments like this, to admit that you may not know the answer. I've done that countless number of times with my team. And, and you know, you say, but we're going to figure it out. And, and it's okay not to have those answers. And so I think it's really important. You know, I, I think Chris, our CEO, did that remarkably well in those early months. Like he, he would go and talk to all of our employees and he would say, look, here's what we're doing to support you. We don't, we don't know. We don't know over the next six weeks, but we're in this together and we'll keep our culture and our values intact and we will stay in communication with you. And that is the reason that when we came back, you know, we, we, had, we had voluntarily decided to close our restaurants for about six weeks to keep our, our team safe. And when we came back, the, the amount of people that rejoined us uh, was astounding. And I think they, they valued the transparency and they know that uh, we led with our values and we're very human about it. And so I think um, that, that, that's the lesson I've learned over the last few years. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like you guys not only invest in your customers and take everything from a customer first approach, but also a people first approach when you're thinking about your, your employees and especially navigating them through, through times of change. And you know what I think is so great about that is when you invest in your people and they know that you care for them, you know, that translates into the customer experience too, that they're giving to people who walk into your stores, a happier staff, a happier, you know, restaurant, like, um, ambiance. So that's all great to hear. And Tori, Tori, you actually just hit on something we didn't discuss. And that is, we actually have a a phrase that, uh, talks about our culture and and we call it you first, it's a you first culture. And what we mean by that is we believe that if you take care of your teams, your teams are going to take care of your customer. And it's just a cycle that works. And uh, so, yeah, you you know it. I love it. I mean, it sounds like um, you guys are growing rapidly too, right? Uh, you're not, I believe you guys are opening a few stores this, this year. So when you're thinking about growing rapidly, how are you balancing that with staying local? Yeah, I think um, especially in the breakfast space. So the breakfast space is, is somewhat interesting because there's, it's probably the most underdeveloped day part, whereas lunch and dinner are, there's a lot of, um, a lot of competitors, a lot of different options. There's less so in the breakfast space. And so what we see is when we go into these markets, new markets, it's all of the one and two unit places that you're competing with that we, we like to say that there's no one doing what we're doing at scale. And so we are very careful that balancing that growth with staying local and not just becoming a place that stamps out restaurants. And the thing that I would probably point to the most is if you know, if you've been to one first watch, you've been to one first watch, and I think the hallmark of a, a you know large, fast-growing brands is they they take the easy path where they just start to develop their call it their box, their restaurant, and you kind of just you just go and you just make them, and that is couldn't be further from what we do. I mean, we we actually have a team across multiple departments here that sit every Monday and look at every restaurant that will be opening. And when you think of opening, you know, 35, 40, 45, 50 restaurants, like that, that's very difficult to do with as many people in the room designing those restaurants, but we iterate on them and we make sure that each one of them have localized elements and that they have, doesn't look like the one before it. And we, we were able to learn from the last one and apply new things. Like recently we've been adding indoor outdoor bars mm-hmm so that you have air coming in and out of the restaurant and you get this great occasion where it kind of elevates the entire feeling of the restaurant. We're adding, you know, we add interior, interior localized murals. Uh, We've been adding exterior murals that are all unique and different. And so, I mean, you get it. We want to make sure that each first watch is different and that fits into the the community uniquely that it's joining. I I love hearing that. Um, And here at Nextdoor, obviously we're really focused on, you know, building communities and just cultivating a world where everyone feels like they have a neighborhood you can rely on. And it's the little things like that that really help people feel at home when in their neighborhood, it's going to a local restaurant where you're seeing local murals that you won't see anywhere else. I think that really resonates with people and it becomes almost more than just a restaurant you eat at. It becomes a place where you build memories and you know, with your friends and family and your neighbors. So, so one thing I'll add there, um, you know, I know I've talked about technology a lot, but yeah. on the other side of that, the thing that I get the most excited about with First Watch is that we have become a gathering place in our communities. And, you know, we're not shrinking our dining rooms, we're expanding them. And, and yes, we offer takeout and all of that, but for us, it still stays true. And, and, and in our dining rooms, what we know is we're not just serving breakfast, 
but it's two friends that just finished a yoga class and they want to go somewhere somewhere to connect or it's a family on saturday that's going out and having their moment as as a family and so we really do see our place um, in our communities as a point of gathering and connection and we hear that a lot from our customers as well so i think it's important to say that even though we do talk about technology and what it can do to elevate hospitality it's also important to realize that you know we also want to be a place people sit around the table together too yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, we touched on this a little bit, but the changes we've seen in the industry as it relates to technology um, leading up to this point, but what are some emerging trends that you're seeing in the industry that you're excited about or that you're even just a little bit more curious about? Yeah, I mean, um, for us, uh, I'll speak uniquely. Like, I think the, it, the on the weekends, we, like I said, could have an hour, hour and a half wait. And that's, that's a missed opportunity uh, for us. And so, you know, I constantly with our team try to think of how can technology hit points of friction like that? How can we make the wait more enjoyable? Could we, could we ever allow you to, to input your order ahead so that it's there and you don't have to wait when you, when you hit the table? You know, I'm just throwing out ideas here. But I think the cool thing uh, is that casual dining, I shouldn't say casual, full service dining is realizing for the first time that technology doesn't have to be transactional the technology can actually elevate the overall occasion if you if you apply it in the right places. And so I, I think that's uh, the most exciting thing that First Watch as well as the industry has ahead of it. And then when you're thinking about just in general what First Watch is going to market with or focus on going to market with, um, can you share, us, share anything about that with us? Uh, well, I think for us, it's about continuing to prioritize our teams uh, yeah. and, and that's where a lot of that technology that we're doing to uh, bring into our kitchens allows them better quality of life. You know, one of the things I also like to point out is that, you know, we're only open 7 a.m. to 2.30 every day. And that allows our teams a quality of life that is, you know, you can't find in a lot of places in this industry. And so that coupled with ways that technology can improve uh, and take work off of their plates that make the job easier is, is really the thing that we're most excited about as well as making sure that we're offering more technology to our customers to make that um, experience more seamless. Right, and I think, you know, work-life balance, everyone can appreciate that, especially your employees. So having that as an option, operating on the people's first, you guys really live through not only your food ethos, but I'm sure with your core mission value as a company. So that's great to hear. Yeah, I mean, we hear, you know, a lot of times we'll, we'll constantly go back to our team and say, hey, when are you getting out? Yeah. In the afternoon and if we hear times like 5 5 30 you know we get pretty maniacal about okay, how how can we what's going wrong how can we help we want you to get home so that you can get on to the next get home to your family you can you know get kids off the school bus you can do whatever you're going to do as a hobby in the evenings and so that's really important and that's something that within daytime dining uh with first watch closing at 2 30 that we see as a real competitive advantage um, within the industry especially right now in times when i mean you, you read the articles yep. too, how difficult it is um, in the labor market, so. Yeah, certainly. And um, if we're looking about, if we're looking at First Watch maybe five years from now, what are some of the things you would be most proud of about the company? And you've touched on this, people, customer first, but there's anything else that we haven't really touched on today. We'd love to hear it. I So I'll say this selfishly that, yeah, you know, even though we have 440 restaurants and we've talked about our, our growth, our, uh, our awareness in the United States, even though we're in 28 states, is, is very, very low. And we, we're, we, we're okay with that because we want that awareness to grow organically. But I think for us, for more and more people to get introduced to who we are and what we do uh, is the thing we're most excited about because you know, we, we like to say that we, we think sometimes we're the best kept secret in the industry. And, uh, and so we're just excited to be able to to raise that awareness, to let more people organically discover who we are. I mean, we don't advertise heavily because we think that mm -hmm. that takes away from the genuine feel of who we are as a brand, um, as I, I hope you feel through this. And so, uh, you know, it's just, it's just as we continue to grow year after year like we are, making sure more and more people figure out who First Watch is. Got it. And, you know, I, I manage a sales team over here at Nextdoor and I cover the retail and dining uh, vertical. So what you're saying is very different than what I'm hearing from a lot of other marketers uh, that you actually want to be a best kept secret um, and kind of stay more grow through organic growth. So how are you doing that right now? Is it 
just through word of mouth? Is it creating such a great customer experience that people want to leave and tell their fam friends and family about First Watch? Tell us a little bit more about that organic growth. Yeah, I mean, through and through, we are an operational centric company. Um, mm -hmm. We in our home office exist for supporting our restaurants. And, and I'm sure you'll hear a lot of other restaurant brands say that, but uh, you know, you might find organizations that are more marketing led and that's not the case. And I think it comes from the fact that we've been so operator led with that, that tenure of leader I talked about for 40 years and they've been here for so long mm -hmm. and they've just created a restaurant experience that's unmatched and, and, and just really genuinely different. And so our job is to continue to support them. So yes, I mean, it's really about focusing on the organization and making sure that everyone else besides our operations teams are spent supporting those that are running our restaurants, because if we take care of them, the customer experience and the freshness of the food and our customer satisfaction scores uh, are going to follow. And we know that we're a high word of mouth brand. And so we're very lucky to be able to really deliver on that strategy. Yeah, I think, I think the experience speaks for itself and, you know, word of mouth and recommendation on next door, at least over 70% of our conversations is just around recommendations. Where, where's the best, who can, where is the best babysitter? Where can I go eat for breakfast today? So we know that if you are able to build that experience for, for your neighbors, your neighbors going to talk to other people and they're going to want to drive people into those, into those restaurants and build the same memories. And I'll give you one other example um, of how we live that yeah. is, is we actually, for anyone that leaves our restaurants, about two hours after you leave our restaurants, we ping you a one question survey. And we ask how likely you are based on your experience to recommend us to a friend. And, and our organization kind of lives around that number because mm -hmm. it comes back to the idea that we know that if you organically found and discovered First Watch, you're going to be so delighted. And if we do a good job of running our restaurants and maintaining that, that restaurant experience, you're going to leave and want to talk to a friend, to a neighbor, to a family member about us. And so it's just an example of that, that number, that metric. It, it is just a number, but it also symbolizes um, everything we talked about. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds like you're engaging with your customer feedback and making sure that, like, like you mentioned, when you build out a new local store, it's about what have we learned from previous stores? What have we learned from our previous customers? And how can we integrate that to make it an even better experience for the next one? Completely. Great. Um, so I think it's Q&A time. Let me go ahead and just check if there's anything on here. I don't see any questions in um, questions in here. So I guess I can just end it with, is there anything else about First Watch that you want um, the viewers to know today? No, I think, I think we covered a lot of ground. Uh, like I said, if you haven't been to First Watch, um, you know, you go, go to our website and, or go to our Instagram. Like we try to really bring the freshness to life. Um, and so if, if you're not in one of those 28 states, we'll be there soon. Um, and uh, really appreciate being able to share our story. Yeah, absolutely. I believe your first location is in Pacific Grove in, in California. Is that correct? So actually, uh, and ironically, I talked about Chef Shane. Uh, uh -huh. he is, he's actually there. It's, it's not affiliated uh, with First Watch okay. anymore. It's actually called First Awakenings. Okay. And uh, it's still there. And a lot yeah. of the menu items uh, that were uh, on earlier or even kind of on our menu inspiration today are still there. And just today he is there visiting it. But yeah, it was in uh, Pacific Grove, California, but then the first first watch was here in Sarasota, Florida, um, mm -hmm. and is still a great restaurant today. So, great. Well, it, it's on my bucket list when I'm in Florida. So, I really appreciate your time today. It was great to just learn more about you, learn more about what First Watch is doing, and I hope everyone who's listening make an effort to go to First Watch.